Hey everyone, this is Lisa from Life in Layouts, and I am back with a, another Doodlebug Hippity Hoppity collection. This is from last year. I'm also going to be using a sketch from March Madness, and I'll explain that in just a moment. I decided to pull out this collection because I wanted to see exactly how much I have left, and I was able to get two layouts done this evening that I worked on this. I think I may be able to get one more layout out of this collection, and then what I'll do is I'll save the embellishments to add to next year's collection. I pulled out the tangerine petite prints in the floral. I am going to use an entire 12 by 12 sheet of paper. On the right hand side of the layout, I went ahead and cut it at four and a half, which left the rest six and a half to be on the left hand side of the layout. I also pulled out the polka dots from the collection. I really wanted to use several border punches. So I pulled out my scallop border punch for the polka dots and cut both of the polka dots in the scallops. I made the polka dots pretty large. And then I'm gonna cut the stripe paper in a one inch then use a different border punch on the swimming pool stripe paper and I cut that down to a half an inch. And of course having to cut out two of them so that I have it for each side of the layout. And then I just needed to find like a eighth of an inch strip to cover up one of the seams. So I pulled out the petite print and I'm gonna end up using the wood grain side of it. I do pull out my Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Mermaid Lagoon to ink all of my edges. And as I'm inking that up, let me just explain why I'm using this sketch again. During March Madness, I had planned out several of the sketches to use with photos that I already had. Well then, at one point, it must have been late at night, I planned out two layouts. This one and the Medieval Times layout. And then once I got them printed, I was like, what are these photos for? realizing that I had organized them for March Madness. So you have this extra layout for March Madness. And this is a sketch that I will probably use quite a bit. I do enjoy this sketch. I get a ton of photos on it. I actually get even more photos than what the sketch calls for because I did bring down some of my photos to a three by four instead of a four by six. I got a total of 10 photos on this layout plus a journaling card. So you could absolutely get 11 photos on this layout and I feel like there is a lot of embellishment as well and the bones of the sketch really just has a placement for the photos it doesn't have a placement for any of the background pieces I used a similar technique to the layout that I did in March Madness and I will definitely post that at the end of the video if you didn't catch that during the month of March but I did add additional pieces to it so this is one where I feel like if I had a ton of photos that I needed to get down, especially for like an event, I could really create a totally different background on it and make it look really nice with the placement of the photos. These photos are from Easter of 2023 when the boys were searching for eggs in the like kind of side yard and backyard. And I'm actually really glad that I captured these photos because there are two photos of Eli like searching for some of the eggs in like these bushes that we have since had taken down. So it's nice to have those and I will definitely include that information in the journaling since we no longer have those shrubs or bushes on the property. Now that I've gotten the background paper down, I'm gonna start to lay my photos down. I really tried to organize the photos so that they weren't looking directly off the page. The way the boys are set up, it's kind of hard to have it where all of them aren't looking directly off the page, but some of them are. I do end up pulling out a journaling card and I decided to use the one that had the plaid background and then there's a little bunny in a car. Once I got all of the photos laid out, I realized that I wanted a little extra pop on the photos, so I ended up backing all of the photos on white cardstock. I did cut down all of the photos by a quarter of an inch so that the photos with the white mats are still four by six. If I had the thought process to do this before I printed them, it would have been nice to not have to back all of them. It was a way for me to use up kind of the white scrapbook paper that I have been accumulating quite a bit of. I'm really excited that I was able to kind of kill this kit. There's not a whole lot left to it, really a bunch of scraps. I'm going to a crop this weekend and this video will probably post after the crop has already happened. I have an idea for this particular crop and I'm super excited about it. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some of my collections that I have and I'm going to try to kill the collections. So what that means is like for this particular Doodle Bob collection, I think I can maybe get one more layout, maybe two more layouts out of the collection itself. And so I plan to be intentional in looking through the collections themselves and seeing what's left in the collection and then killing that collection. And I was thinking about doing a series on my channel. I haven't decided like if I'm just gonna do the layouts and just go with it or actually call it a series on my channel. But I have a ton of collections that I really truly need to just be done with. And I want to be done with them by using them up and creating layouts with them. So I've gone through my supplies and pulled out collections that I want to pair with photos. Before when I was using the spreadsheet, which is linked below, I was just going through my photos and figuring out what photos I wanted to document. But there were some times when I didn't have collections to match up with the photos. So now I have these layouts planned and sometimes even the photos printed, but I don't have collections to go with them. So I thought if I rethought my process in regards to how I was printing out my photos, I can use up the collections that I have. Now I did just get in Doodlebug's Happy Healing, which I'm super excited about. And I think I have four, maybe five layouts already planned. But I knew that that collection was coming and I knew that I wanted to really use that collection when it got here. I have sat down and put all of the embellishments on the page protectors that I like to use. And in doing that, I was able to even think of a couple of other layouts that I want to do with that collection. So I'm super excited to start playing with that as well. All right, now that I've kind of rambled on about nothing about the layout. So the only thing that I think I've done is added the white cardstock to all of the photos and added the photos down to the layout. I'm again using my T-square ruler to make sure that everything is straight. I have also been asked to do a class and I might actually end up doing this on my channel as well. I have an idea. I was watching one of my older videos because I'm trying to build up my watch hours. I found a video where I had used a large grid and I thought that that would be a good idea to use when I am trying to teach how to use a T-square ruler because I used it a lot to create that grid. So I might do that layout for that class, but then I also might do a video on it for my channel so that I have it when for the class as well. So lots of things coming up. All right, so I did go ahead and put the journaling card up on Fun Foam. I also included a photo of the eggs. This picture I took for Facebook the night before Easter in 2023, after I had filled all the eggs, I took a picture of them to like post saying, the eggs are done and I'm super excited about them being done. Like that's the worst part of having Easter <laughs> is filling all those plastic eggs. I fill the eggs up with change from my change jar. And then afterwards I make them count the money, roll the money, and then I give them actual dollar bills or Eli has started to have the money be added to his cash out card now that he's 13. But then I give them the actual cash or, or put it on their cash app. And then I take the rolled coins to the bank. So I use Easter as a way for them to roll my money for me. <laughs> you know, what we do as an adult, right? All right, so what I decided to do on the right-hand side was put a doodle pop of a two little bunnies in a hot air balloon. And then I used the doodle pop clouds that came with it right next to it. And then since I had what looked like a cloud scene up there, since they were in a hot air balloon, I decided to go ahead and add a bunny that is carrying a banner that says Happy Easter on it. And then down at the bottom, I have a bunny with a wheelbarrow full of Easter eggs on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, I just added a circle that says Easter excellent. And I did look through the embellishments trying to find a couple other pieces. Couldn't find anything that I really like. So I was like, let me take a break and adhere things down. That's normally what I do when I am struggling with what to add to the embellishment clusters. So I am using my glue press, still loving this thing. I know there was a couple posts about people saying there was some reviews on it, but then people not really using it. I love it. Uh, I have had issues with it clogging, but normally it's because I left it open. As long as I use the lid that does have the needle, it will unclog it. And I usually don't have issues with it after that. Over on the left-hand side, I did add a little banner piece that says here for the candy. And then three little shape sprinkles in an egg shape. 
And I wanted to add a tree over there and it took me a little while to find a tree that like worked well. I looked through a couple of different embellishments. They were all just really small, but I did end up finding this tree that had some polka dots on it. And then I really wanted to add some more eggs or some other pieces to that Easter bunny over on the right. And it took me a little while to find what I really wanted to add. I did end up adding a, another little banner piece that says hunting eggs. And I still have not been able to use this little fence. I have no idea how I'm going to incorporate it into a layout. But I do settle with three little flowers over there. A pink, purple, and teal color, which I think is swimming pool. But I don't know what the purple, purple is probably bub bubble gum, and I'm not sure what the purple is called. Still learning all of the doodlebug colors. I decided to pull out some thickers in like white glitter. They're so pretty. Just to put the year 2023 underneath that photo on the left hand side. And of course using my glue press to adhere all of those down. I feel like Doodlebug is the best collection for Easter. There's so many cute things in there and I feel like I have gotten a ton of layouts. That's the other thing that I wanted to look to see. Once I get the collection killed, I might look through and see exactly how many layouts I got from that collection because I'd be interested to see how many I've gotten. Because you know, buying an entire collection can be kind of expensive. But if I'm able to get five or six, I really wanna say I've gotten probably closer to eight layouts done. If I've been able to get that many layouts done, I feel like the money that I spent is well worth it. All right, everyone, here is my final layout as well as some close-ups. If you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you wanna see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.